and modify it. Stop, drop it low, but pick it up carefully. Work them glutes like you in physical therapy. So the next thing we will discuss here is the stomach, which is the second part of the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, stomach is actually a dilated part of the alimentary canal, and it has three main functions. The first function is it stores the food among fifteen ml in adults. Okay, it's the second thing is it mixes the food with gastric secretion to form a semi-fluid called as chyme, and the rate of the deli delivery of chyme to the small intestine. So the so that digestion takes place. Okay, so the histology. Now we will discuss the histology of the stomach. Stomach have uh, the following uh, layers: mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, propria, and the serosa. Okay, so the in in mucosa there are three main layers: the epithelia, lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa. So the the submucosa contain the stomach and the intestine have a thin simple columnar epithelium layer for the secretion and absorption a thick layer of loose connective tissue that surround the mucosa contains the blood vessel lymphatic vessels nerves gland that may be embedded in this layer so the muscularis mucosa which is also called uh, the muscularis layer of the stomach which is also called as the muscularis propria there are three layers of muscle uh, which is only found in the stomach uh, and not found the rest of the uh, digestive tract. The outer longitudinal muscle, the middle circular muscle, the, basically the middle circular muscle is not found in the rest of the edge of the GIT, and this uh, this layer forms the pyloric sphincter in the uh, uh, in the end of the stomach. And the third layer is the inner oblique muscle. Okay, next thing is the serosa. As you can see here, moving from mucosa, submucosa. Muscularis layer and the serosa, which is the outer most layer. So, uh, the upper part this is esophagus, this is the fundus, this is the muscular layer, this is the gastric pits, and this is the gastric tubes. Around the, uh, this uh, uh, thread like structure, and this is the serosal uh, peritoneal layer, this is the longitudinal fold, this is the pyloric canal, and this is the pyloric sphincter. So this is the gastric uh, canal and the cardiac orifice. So, now we will discuss the uh, mucosa. In mucosa, we will discuss the stomach epithelium. The stomach epithelium basically contains the mucus cell, which secretes mucus, and the parietal cell, the chief cell, D cells, G cells, and chromatophins. Okay, so the parietal cells and or which is also called auxentic cells secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factors okay which is located in the body of the stomach the next muscles are included uh, in the uh, epithelium are the chief cells or zygogenic zymogenic cell which secrete pepsin which is present in the body so the d cells is the next cells which is found in the epithelium it present in the it is present in the antrum and it secrete the gastrin and somatostatin the next cells are the g cells present in the antrum it secrete gastrin Okay, as you can see here, this is the astrology. So, uh, these are the uh, these are the cells. This is the mucosa, submucosa, and serosa. These cells are uh, embedded in this manner. So, location and description of the stomach located in the upper part of the abdominal abdomen, extended from beneath the left costal margin region into the epigastric and umbilical region. Much, much of the stomach lie under the cover of the lower ribs. Roughly, it is a, a J-shaped organ and has two openings: the cardiac and pyloric, the two two curvatures, two surfaces, two main parts, and two main nodes. Okay, two openings are the cardiac and pyloric. Two curvatures are the greater and lesser curvature. Two surfaces are the anterior and posterior surface. Two parts are the cardiac and pyloric part, and two notches are actually the cardiac or a greater notch or angular notch. Okay, stomach is very is very fixed at both ends but is very mobile in between uh, it it tends to be high and transversely uh, transversely arranged in short obese person and is elongated in vertical and tall persons and thin persons its shape undergoes considerable variation in the same person and depend on the volume of its content the position of the body and phase of respiration okay so as you can see here this is the dotted structure or the uh, stomach. It have anterior posterior structure, 
uh, surface, the lesser, the greater curvature, the cardiac and the pyloric opening or the duodenal opening, and uh, it is having two uh, cardiac and the um, pyloric uh, structure. So uh, basically, uh, the stomach is uh, uh, surrounded by the peritoneum in such uh, manner, in such manner from upper. This is the gastrophrenic ligament. Next is the gastrosphenic and inferiorly it forms the greater momentum. While from the lesser curvature, it uh, lesser momentum it forms the hypogastric, hi, uh, hepatogastric, hepatodurinal ligament, and this is actually the bearing of the stomach. Parts of the stomach it include the fundus, the body, the pyloric antrum, the pylorus. The fundus is actually the dome shape and project upward uh, as to the left of the cardiac orifice. Usually it is full of gas. Body of the uh, stomach it extends from the level of the cardiac orifice to the to the level of incisura angularis, which is a constant notch in the lower part of the lesser curvature. Pyloric antrum uh, this extends from the incisura of angularis to the pylorus. Sulcus intermedium uh, divide the pyloric canal and antrum. Pyl pylorus the, the most uh, uh, tubular part of the stomach which is a uh, thick muscular wall called pyloric sphincter and the cavity of the pylorus is called pyloric canal. As you can see here, this is the fundus, cardiac notch, the pyloric antrum, greater curvature, the body, the pyloric canal, the pyloric sphincter, the pyloric constriction, the duodenum, the pyloric orifice, this one. And the, this one is is the angularis incisura angularis lesser curvature and this is the esophageal pouch. Okay, so the lesser curvature from the right border of the stomach and uh, stomach extend from the cardiac orifice to the pylorus. It's it is suspended from the liver by the lesser momentum. The greater curvature is much longer than the lesser curvature and extends from the left of the cardiac orifice over the dome or the fundus and along the left border. Of the stomach to the pylorus. The gastrosplenic momentum extends from upper part of the greater curvature to the spleen, and greater momentum extends from the lower part of the greater curvature to the transverse column. The cardiac orifice is where the esophagus enters the stomach, although no anatomic sphincter can be demonstrated here. A physiologic, which is basically a physiologic mechanism, exists that prevent the regurgitation of the stomach content into the esophagus. So the pyloric canal is actually on the pyloric orifice which is uh, about one inch long. The circular muscle coat of the, uh, the stomach is uh, much thicker here and uh, form the anatomic and physiologic sphincter, pyloric sphincter. The pylorus lies on the transpyloric plate and its position can be re reorganized by a slight constriction on the surface of the stomach. Pyloric sphincter function, uh, it controls the uh, outflow of the gastric content into the duodenum. The sphincter receives motor fiber from the sympathetic system and inhibitory from the vagus nerve. The pylorus is controlled by local nervous system and hormonal influences uh, from the stomach and the duodenum. The mucous membrane of the stomach is thick and vascular and is thrown into the numerous fold of rogae. And the muscular wall of the stomach contains longitudinal fibers, circular fibers, and on and oblique fibers, muscle fibers. The miserable peritoneum completes around the stomach. It leaves the lesser curvature as the omentum and greater curvature as the gastro, uh, gastrospenic omentum and the greater omentum. Relation of the stomach. Superiorly, it has abdominal wall, left costal margin, pleura of the lungs, and the lungs tissues. The diaphragm, left lobe of the liver, while posteriorly it has the lesser sac, diaphragm, spleen, suprarenal gland, splenic artery, upper part of the kidney, pancreas, transverse colon, and transverse mesocolon. While its peritoneal relations, uh, intra, it is an intraperitoneal organ, there is a beard area at the superior, uh, so superiorly it has lesser momentum, epiploid foramen, hypatogastric ligament, hypodurdinal ligament, and inferiorly it has the greater momentum. The greater pouch and inferiorly it has the gastrosphenic, gastrosphenic and greater sac. Posteriorly it has only the lesser sac. As you can see here, this is the, the visceral relations. So blood supply of the 
uh, stomach and uh, gut is actually the celiac trunk to supply the upper gut or uh, which is called foregut. The superior mesentery artery supply the mid gut, inferior mesentery artery supply the hind gut or lower gut. So descending aorta, the, it divides, uh, it gives the celiac trunk and the celiac trunk gives three main branches, the left gastric artery, common hepatic artery, ischemic artery, the left gastric artery of two branches, osphageal artery and small gastric artery, common hepatic, uh, while the second branch common hepatic gives the right gastric artery, gastrododinal artery, which gives further two more two branches, the superior gastrododinal and the right hepatic artery. So the third branch of the common hepatic artery is the hepatic artery, which further gives the left and right hepatic artery. So the splenic artery is third main division of the celiac trunk, which further gives short, short gastric artery, pancreatic artery, left histoepiploic artery. This is actually the blood supply of the stomach. So this supply the veins drain into the portal circulation, circulation, the left and right gastric vein directly uh, drain into the portal vein. Short, short gastric vein, the superior mesenteric vein, and the left gastroepiploic vein. Uh, drain into the splenic vein. As you can see here, this is the venous supply. So the lymphatic drains follow the arteries into the left and right gastric node. The left and the right gastroepiploic node and the stomach eventually passes to the celiac node located around the root of the celiac artery on the posterior abdominal wall. The superior gastric node, the supra uh, supra pyloric group, the subpyloric group, and pancreatodurinal lymph node. As you can see here. So the nerve supply, uh, it includes sympathetic uh, derivati derivatives from the celiac plexus, parasympathetic fibers from the right and left vagus nerve, uh, which include the anterior vagal trunk, which which is formed in the thorax mainly from the left left vagus nerve. It enters the abdomen on the anterior surface of the esophagus, the trunk, which may be single or multiple, then divide into the uh, into branches that supply anterior surface of the stomach. A large hepatic branch passes up to the liver and uh, from uh, this pyloric branch passes down to the pylorus and the post while, the, while the posterior vagal trunk uh, which move from uh, formed in the thoracic thorax mainly from the right vagus nerve enter the abdomen on the posterior surface of the esophagus. The trunk then divided into the branches that supply the posterior surface of the stomach. A large branch passes to the celiac and the mesenteric plexus and is distributed to the intestine as far as the splenic uh, flexor and to the pancreas. Sympathetic innervation of the stomach carries a proportion of pain transmitting nerve fibers, whereas the parasympathetic vagal fiber uh, are secretomotor to the ga gastric gland and motor to the muscular wall of the stomach. The pyloric sphincter receives motor fiber from sympathetic and from the vagus nerve. So, vagus nerve is basically 80% sensory and 20% motor, and its section is motility and secretion. The left vagus nerve, uh, it, it, it has some branches which, uh, which are the seromuscular, cross foot, anterior lateral jet, hepatic, while the right vagus nerve have uh, four branches criminal nerve of Gracie, celiac branch, posterior lateral jet, seromuscular. The celiac plexus uh, from T5 to T10 with a greater splenic nerve. And if it hurts to modify, stop, drop it low, but pick it up carefully, work them glutes like you in physical therapy.